So get ready to be inspired, fellow Victory Gardeners. You know, one of the things I hear the most often as a barrier to start home gardening is cost. And they're right, it can be very expensive to start your own home garden, but today we are going to share a lot of cost-saving tips so you can home garden without breaking your wallet. And I urge you, if you have a cost-saving tip that I don't mention in this video, please comment below. I would like this to be a repository that people can refer back to when they wonder how can they save money in their home garden. So share that knowledge. Now let's get started. So let's start with the bones of your garden. Are you going to do, you know, just flat, dig up in the yard or soil, whatever, and plant your garden, much the way you see in a farm? Are you going to have raised bed gardens or are you going to have container gardens? Well, when we started out, I wanted raised bed gardens because it's a little bit easier to take care of and it was expensive. Uh, my husband crafted my raised beds from cedar and I wanted cedar wood because it doesn't rot as fast and doesn't have chemicals in it. And that was like maybe 20 years ago. It came at a cost. Now here on Amazon, I noticed that you could get one made out of uh, galvanized metal, which is a great idea. 60 bucks, but it's only eight by four feet, feet bed. That's pretty, I mean, we want more than one bed, right? So that could get pretty expensive. Well, then I found this from Crafting Creatures. They made a raised bed garden just using pallets. And you know, you can get pallets pretty much for free usually. And here's a clever one. They use logs that they must have cut down on their property. Makes a great raised bed. And here's one where they painted recycled tractor tires and made that their garden bed. And here's another one. They're using a kiddie pool for their garden bed. Now, there are even container options. I thought this one was really clever. Uh, it is a tiered bucket system and it doesn't take up as much room, but it kind of gives you a raised bed bucket container system. And you know, you can reuse any containers. Yep, you can reuse buckets that you might have or I know our cat litter comes in a big container. You could use that. Just be creative. You don't have to go out and buy a special container to do container gardening. Now, one of the things you also need for that bones of your garden is soil. It's very, very important. And soil is different than dirt. Now, you might get dirt delivered for free. Very often I see this on Craigslist. Somebody is taking dirt out of an area and just want to dump it up somewhere. So they do, but warning, you don't know what's in that dirt, right? Could have chemicals in it, other things in it, a lot of weeds, and it isn't soil. It is dirt. Soil is enriched so your plants can grow optimally. And I know when we first started that garden area, I had topsoil delivered and even way back then I think it was five hundred dollars for maybe five cubic yards I can't remember and I'm sure it's much much more now and before I had brought in like mushroom compost to add to it so I could have really good garden soil and all of that comes at a price but if you're willing to work making your dirt into soil yourself. You can do it for pennies or even free by composting. And again, you can spend money on composting. Now this was a neat one again, where they're using those free wooden pallets and they made a compost bin and I did that before too. It makes a great easy bin and I even just attached the pallets with the zip ties. It was easy, did it myself, and it worked for many, many years. And in that compost bin, you're just gonna be putting your kitchen scraps, maybe your grass clippings, your leaves, that type of thing, and you're gonna let it disintegrate 
and make great compost and you're going to put it in your garden and it will make great soil but it also will make great fertilizer and we'll talk a little bit more about fertilizer in a minute so next you have to decide how do you start your seeds now you could buy established plants again that is expensive but even nowadays seeds are getting very expensive you can easily pay five dollars for a packet now you might be able to go to Dollar Tree they had four packets for a dollar five they were non-gmo but there sure weren't many seeds in the, each of those packets but that is an option you might also want to contact your local horticultural society or your extension office and see if anybody is doing a seed exchange that is a great way that you could exchange seeds you have for ones they have and you get seeds from plants that were grown locally so that is definitely a benefit you can also if you're like me and i might get let's say beet seeds well i get a heck of a lot more beet seeds in that packet than i need in my garden so at work we kind of bring in extra hey i got some beet seeds and they might have uh, a squash seeds or something that i'm interested in and we trade that way but you can also on your neighborhood board say i'm looking for extra seeds if you have any great i'm just starting a garden and you'd be surprised about the amount of people that will want to help you start a garden because gardeners are kind of like they want to uh, convert everybody to be a gardener so they'll be very willing to help you the other thing you can do is there are certain perennial garden plants um, think of potato onions i grow those often i have extra i could easily give it to somebody for free and they could start their own garden so again put it up on a board at your local garden supply store or tractor supply or even um, your neighborhood digital board and say that you're looking for plant starts for your garden and you can do that with elderberry too raspberry i mean a lot of different things you can start in your garden from a freebie from a friend or neighbor oh and one more thing i'd be willing to give somebody i grow sunchokes they make a lot of sunchokes i can only eat so many so again great to give to a neighbor and they can plant them and then eventually they're going to be in the same spot and they'll want to give them to somebody else so always share your bounty with another newbie gardener there are many ways to start your seeds and I mean look at this one pretty expensive $12 for a 12 hole starting tray well again 12 I need a lot more than that that could get pretty darn expensive but you can start seeds just save different things that you might have um, containers you know here great container to start yogurt cups paper cups make your own cups from newspapers i mean there's all kinds of ways that you can start seeds for free i mean not using any other containers now full disclosure i have to admit i love the system i have it is a buy once and done cup right here you can see it i have used these for years and years so it was an initial purchase but now I'm using it again and again and again. So you might also want to look into that. I have a video on it and I really think it's a great way to do seed starting. And you might want to try like a mini greenhouse. And you can buy, I mean, I remember seeing them for like 20 bucks at Aldi's or something, you know, where it had the, I don't know, three or four shelves and then the plastic cover went on. I had one uh, and it, you really have to tie it down wherever you're putting it and blew off my deck all my seeds were ruined um, so that is one very low cost alternative but you know what you can do it for free again this is right rotisserie chicken container you save it clean it up and you have an own little mini greenhouse to start your seeds and you can do this with a lot of different containers here's one look at that they made a it was called mega crafty they used cd clear covers 
and made this greenhouse, which was pretty darn clever. And I am sure you can get the CDs covers for little or to nothing or at Goodwill. People also use soda bottles to start. And here's one in a container where they're using an old plastic umbrella. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Now, Provident Prepper also has an excellent video on how to winter start seeds. And basically you're using a milk jug or water jug and you're just cutting along the bottom third, not all the way around. You put in your potting medium, plant your seeds, put the top back on, put tape around it. And they put it outside at the end of January, beginning of February in Utah, in the snow. And yes, if you have hardier plants, such as onions or kale or lettuce, it will grow. It might take a little longer than your indoor, but you probably will end up with a hardier plant. So again, just using freebies. Now, the system I use is, I use my chicken brooder that I made a long time ago as a seed starting type of greenhouse. And I've used everything from my actual chicken brooder lights to aquarium lights that I got free and actual LEDs and that works well for me and the reason I have to have something enclosed is because my cats are very curious and for some reason when the seedling would get a certain height they just bite off the top of it so yeah I had to have it in a protective area but again something I made for my chicks that I can also use gardening great alternative the other thing I should mention is for seeds is do your own seed saving. Here I am saving parsnip seeds and that way for the next two years I had all the parsnip seeds I would ever need and I gave to friends. So once you start gardening get into seed saving and it will definitely save you a lot of money in the future. Now I have this little seeding square shown here and it is pretty nifty if you're into square foot gardening I have to admit but I had made my own from needlepoint plastic canvas and it has worked great for again I don't know 15 years or more but you can also use like here is a, a special well it's not for muffins it you know honestly I don't know what this pan was originally for um, must have made like an egg like type shape or something but again you take this and put it on the soil and you have perfect for planting your things that need to be spaced about six inches apart and you can do that with regular muffin tins or the mini muffin tins so that's a great idea too as a hack to use when you're planting Again, you can spend a lot of money on labels depending on how fancy you want to be. Uh, here's one, you could get a 30 pack and it's almost $27. Now, I really highly encourage you to label when you plant your seeds because you may forget what you planted or where you planted. And believe me, I've done that before. But you can use very, very low cost options. I've seen people take the silverware from a picnic, whatever, wash it and keep it okay and right here with a sharpie what they're planning put it into the ground and they have a free marker so I've also seen people do it with popsicle sticks this is a used stick again right on with a sharpie put it in the ground you have a free label or I've seen people do it with stones with used canning lids and even with paint stirs now fertilizer is something people often also add to their garden, although if you have great compost, you're probably adding all you need to your garden area. But you may want to add something else and fertilizer comes at a price. Uh, here's super compost, wow, almost $41. And here's some fish fertilizer, $35 for a gallon. And you know, you can make your own fish fertilizer. It really isn't that hard, uh, especially if you like to fish or have people in your household that do, just save the guts and the heads 
and bones and you can make your own fish fertilizer very very easy I also worked with somebody that actually when they got done fishing would just go in the garden and dig a hole where there wasn't a plant and actually put in the fish head and stuff and then put soil back on top so for the next year she has some great soil I would though caution only doing that if you have an enclosed area because believe me that fish head will attract animals such as possums and coons to dig in your garden and you don't want that. The other thing we often add to our garden is manure and you know I have my own chickens, my own rabbits, so they make what I call my black gold, right? My manure for my garden. But you might not have those advantages and in that case very often you can get free manure on Craigslist. Just be careful because I once did that for horse manure and it had a lot of uh, grass type seeds in it and it was really a weedy area. It took me a long time to get those weeds out, a couple of years actually. But you might be able to get free bunny manure as long as you're willing to go under the cages and dig it up. So there are ways that you can get fertilizer from your garden without spending any money at all. Now what about supports for your garden? You know you saw my cattle panels which is a lower cost way to do an arch right but you know it's 50 some bucks a panel and then you got your rebar so are there other ways that you can do supports for your garden? Yes there are. So here's one where she actually made it all out of twigs. I mean it's pretty impressive. It's probably willow twigs. Here's another one where they're just using branches and twine in between and that's working great. I've seen it where they have made a trellis out of using wire hangers, out of actually an old mattress spring against the wall. I mean there's a lot of ways you can do it and you don't have to spend like this one here which is over $317 for an arch. You can have support without spending a lot of money. The other thing for support is you might have individual like you're tying up your tomato plant for instance. You can use little bread clips to do that. I use this actually for my orchids and it works really well. Or you can have the bigger, right, little clips. This one's a little small a bigger one and go and clip and that works fine and you can get these recycled. Just don't steal them from your office. But there's many things you can do. You could save the wire tie from your bread bag and that could be used as support for stalks growing. I mean there's a lot of things you can do. You can also use like my sunchokes have really big 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 stalks up I let those dry and those make great supports. The same way you can do that with corn. So you can actually use something from last year's garden to give support this year. Again, no cost. Now something we all worry about, weeds, right? Who likes to weed? Well, you could use weed barrier, but that's pretty expensive. I mean this is $50 for 4 feet by 100 feet for heavy duty weed barrier and I have used that underneath my grapevines but you know what it doesn't even last that long so next to that area I started using cardboard now cardboard breaks down really quick actually so you know between all the Amazon boxes we get and my family gets my son gets a lot we save the boxes break them down and then I use that for a walkway in my garden so it is a weed barrier and it is replaceable and completely, completely free. And you might also be able to do that with newspapers, with leaves, pine needles, whatever you have. Oh, and I should remember, of course, a lot of people use mulch in their garden, right? Wood mulch. And you might be able to get that through your county. Um, where I live they don't, but in a nearby city they can get it free. They can go as long as they scoop it up and put it in the back of their truck or their van, whatever, and take it. 
they have free wood mulch because the county cuts down trees, brings it there, and processes it, and then the people can have the mulch for free. So you also want to check into that. Now, tools. Now, I will tell you, I do have my favorite tool and hoary hoary knife, and I think it's well worth the anywhere from 25 to 50 bucks, depending on what one you buy. It's about what I use all the time, whether I'm planting or digging or doing anything. I love that tool. But you can go to garage sales, or again, look on Craigslist, go to Goodwill, and you can get some inexpensive tools. And sometimes all they need is a little love, right? To remove the rust, and you have a really hardy tool that will last for many, many years as opposed to going to Home Depot and buying a brand spanking new one. And of course, one of the things you can do, borrow from your neighbors. Maybe you only need a tool one day out of the year. So maybe your neighbor or family member is willing to give it to you. Or if you need some more expensive tool, then you might want to rent it at one of those places that rent it for the day or the hour. Again, that can be more cost effective. Or you could barter. You know, I've got eggs. Right now, eggs are a bit in demand. So maybe I say, hey, can I borrow that? And I'll give you a couple dozen eggs or something like that. Be creative. You don't have to use hard cash to have a great vegetable garden. The other thing is knowledge. And yes, there's a lot of knowledge on the internet, a lot of great gardening sites. You know, I have watched Michigan Gardener since he was in high school and living in Michigan. His growing area is similar. So I love to watch him and I get a lot of knowledge that way. I, <coughs> excuse me. I also pick up books at Goodwill or one of the used bookstores and get knowledge that way. Also, there's a lot of freebies to you if you go to your local cooperative extension and they will give you info for free, maybe even test your soil for free. So the knowledge is out there. You don't have to go to an expensive course or buy expensive books to learn how to garden. So that's it. I hope you join in. Comment below for any ideas you have how you can save cost in your Victory Garden this year. And if you're interested, here's how I start seeds.